Islands are generally a good place to study biodiversity and evolution. In a way, they're like natural experiments. They have sharp boundaries and they're separated sometimes for long periods of time and so evolution becomes more dramatic. This museum is about understanding life on Earth, why it is so diverse, how we can protect it and sustain it for the future. And so if you want to understand how life evolved in the Caribbean, Cuba is central to that puzzle. So all eyes are on Cuba right now as it's changing at an accelerated pace. I think it's the perfect time to engage more deeply with Cuba to learn and understand better its nature and culture. Cuba is a new museum exhibition uh, which will be opening this fall. People are rediscovering Cuba and connecting with it. They're also uh, very curious about it. Uh, it's a chance with this exhibition where we can bring people up to speed on the developments in Cuba and about um, its environmental richness. Cuba is not just one island, but actually an archipelago of over 4,000 islands and keys. It includes virtually every habitat and ecosystem found in the whole Caribbean. Mountains, freshwater ecosystems like wetlands, underground caves, and coral reefs, such as the one being recreated behind me. Islands are really fun because uh, it's almost like evolution goes crazy there. For the lucky animals that get to the islands, they often find what we describe as empty niches. Um, they often have opportunities to evolve and fill these uh, empty holes within the uh, communities. And in some cases, that means that you have to shift your size pretty dramatically. Cuba has things like this giant extinct owl. It was a top predator, one of the top predators in Cuba. So gigantism is a feature of islands, but also, uh, oddly enough, you get exactly the opposite, which is uh, a miniaturization. Cuba, for example, has the smallest bird in the world, the bee hummingbird, and uh, uh, the second smallest frog in the world. Cuba has a lot of animals uh, and, and plants that are found nowhere else. Over half of the plants, 95% of amphibians. And with the reptiles, about 80%. You won't find anywhere else. So we're going to be featuring live animals um, in the exhibition, and one of them will be the, uh, the night annals, which is the largest uh, uh, animal species in Cuba. The color change is really amazing on these. Cuba's nature has been uh, protected by a combination of historical circumstance, but also because Cubans themselves have been very committed to protecting their biodiversity. Gardens of the Queen are this magical uh, reef system which is now um, protected. Reefs are very different to the terrestrial environment. We don't see in Cuba anything like the endemism uh, that we see on the land. Most of the species um, in the marine environment are shared with other island nations in the, in the Caribbean. The fact that Cuba is so large and its reef systems have been kept in such good condition offers a tremendous conservation opportunity for the region. The museum launched an expedition to Cuba in October 2015. This was a, a remarkable expedition. It brought together scientists and experts from the American Museum of Natural History, the National Museum of Natural History in Cuba, and the Humboldt National Park. People sometimes are surprised to find out that the museum has been working in Cuba for over a century, and pretty steadily. Uh, and that's because science transcends politics. Uh, science is really about continuing to improve our understanding of the world, and our hope is that visitors will leave this exhibition with a more nuanced, deeper understanding of Cuba and a critical curiosity that will spark them to go beyond the headlines and learn more about it.